So after a bit of tweaking, we've got something which resembles a bit more of a, a nice flowing cape. And rather than having to go in and build these different folds and creases, we've got something looking a lot more natural. And when we get to a stage or a particular pose that we're happy with, we can just stop the simulation, render out our scene, and we've got the cape done. We could also add a bit of motion blur to it now that it's animating, uh, and it opens up a lot more options. If we wanted to move the character around, then the dynamics would update accordingly. Or if we wanted to change the wind direction, we just change it in the nucleus. So we've pretty much nailed the basics of creating the end cloth. There's just one more thing that I wanted to touch upon, which I missed on the previous video. If you open up your options in your attribute editor, um, we have our properties that we were playing around with previously, but if you want a head start, again, if you want a particular look or feel to the cloth, um, there are a number of presets already set up. So in here we have lots of weird and wonderful things like honey, um, a rubber sheet, silk. So you could always use one of those to start you off and then you can go in and sort of refine the look and feel. So that's just a little tip, just again, to give you a little bit of a head start. So now we have our cloth. Let's just go back and play it again. Again, you can just go in and tweak this as much as you want. Once you've got the hair in the scene, you can play around with those basic dynamic values uh, if you're not happy with how it's looking at the moment. So now we've got the cloth, let's turn our attention to adding hair. Let's stop this simulation for now. We'll close down this window. So we have our scalp model, which is buried inside the head here. Let's go back to our perspective view. Now to create the hair, all we're gonna do is go to select our scalp model, go to N hair, create hair. But this time we're gonna open the options. Now these options are probably slightly different to the default options. So if I reset the settings, you'll see now, by default, we have a U and V count of 8 and 8, and this is how the hair is spread out over that scalp object. Now, I want a little bit more hair to play with, so I'm going to set this to 20 and 20. Now, this will create follicles, and from those follicles will be guide curves, which will guide how the actual clumps of hair move uh, and react, and, well, basically how dynamic they are. The problem is, with the spacing, um, there's going to be patches of the head which are bald. Now we could turn up the UMV count a little bit more, but all this is going to do is give us a lot more things to play with and have to edit. Instead, we can use the passive fill option here, and all we're going to do is set that to 1. What that will do is that will add in random, well, other random follicles on the head but they won't be editable all they will do is basically mimic what's happening with the follicles around them so they're basically just there well as the name suggests it's just a passive a way of passively filling the head without giving you more work to do now clumps uh, points per hair uh, we'll leave that at 10 and the length we'll leave that at 5 for now and just see how it comes out now the hairs per clump will also just leave that as 10 so let's click create and there we have our initially spiky hairstyle and you can see here we've got the red follicles now they're our main follicles they're the ones that we can go in and control if we want later we also have blue follicles and they're the passive ones so they're the ones that we don't edit and you can see it's added in quite a few and we've got quite a nice spread over the head and just a little tip, if you're having issues with how the hair is spreading over the top of the scalp object, make sure it's got a nice set of UVs on it, because it uses the UVs uh, to sort of dictate where the placement is going to be. So the first thing that stands out is the hair is quite short. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm back at frame 1 or frame 0, wherever you uh, created the hair. So it's all spiky. Going to N hair scale hair tool. So let's just select the hair. N hair scale hair tool. We'll just click on the hair 
and we can initially make that longer or shorter now we want it quite long let's make it ridiculously long like that 